esteemed colleagues, proud and resilient peoples of Caribbean heritage. CARICOM Day affords us the opportunity to celebrate the triumphs of our region and our peoples. This year, the Caribbean community and those of our diaspora have demonstrated a resilience which emboldens us even in the face of exasperating times. We have witnessed the devastating effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on our communities, as well as the resulting socioeconomic fallout and acute burden on our healthcare systems. Yet, during this dark time in our history, the leadership of the Caribbean community has remained resolute and steadfast. Friends, we must commend the unrelenting spirit of our Caribbean community and those of the Caribbean diaspora who work instinctively on the front line to protect, comfort and care for those who need it most. The brave who continue to fight against marginalization and social disparity and champion the need for equality, irrespective of nationality, social class, or creed. Our diversity enables the strength and community unlike any other. Finally, permit me to extend heartfelt gratitude to my fellow CARICOM caucus heads of mission, who so ably supported me during my tenure as caucus chair. As His Excellency Senor Lewis, High Commissioner for St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Dean of the CARICOM Caucus assumes the position of Chair. I wish him a successful term. Happy CARICOM Day. On behalf of the London Caucus of CARICOM Heads of Mission, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome all our viewers to the first ever virtual CARICOM Day celebration. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced us all to innovate and adopt new modes of operation. Despite the constraints on being able to meet and interact in our customary way, we could not miss the opportunity to strengthen engagement with our CARICOM family and mark this occasion in a meaningful way. We are excited that through this digital platform, the caucus commemoration this year will be more inclusive, extending far beyond our traditional networks and borders. CARICOM Day is an annual opportunity for us as Caribbean nationals at home and in the diaspora to celebrate our regional identity and unity. It is a time to recognize and celebrate the progress we have made towards achieving shared goals and to renew our focus on the work yet to be done. This year, as we face some of the fiercest global challenges in living memory, the Caucus of Heads of Mission has chosen to reflect on the theme, we are CARICOM, diverse and resilient. Over the past year, the Caribbean community has made appreciable progress in its efforts at having integration make a positive difference in the lives of Caribbean citizens. The region has also continued to punch above its weight in the international community, distinguishing itself as a strong advocate for the interests of small island developing states. The outgoing CARICOM Chair, Her Excellency Prime Minister Mia Mortley of Barbados, has on behalf of the community provided global leadership in calling for a new international economic order to address rising inequality and the climate emergency. The community also supported and watched with pride as St. Vincent and the Grenadines became the smallest country in history to take a non-permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council. Nevertheless, the last 12 months have not been without their challenges. In 2019, the community was plunged yet again into mourning at the devastation and loss of life caused by extreme weather events. The Bahamas suffered the wrath of Hurricane Dorian, even as countries like Dominica and Antigua and Barbuda remained in recovery mode from the catastrophic 2017 hurricane season. 
In addition to facing the existential threat of climate change, most of our nations also continue to be excluded from accessing critical official development assistance from international partners based on criteria which is unarguably unfit for purpose. Compounded by harmful blacklisting and the risking practices, attacks on multilateralism as well as increasing global volatility, these obstacles threaten to destabilize the Caribbean's progress towards sustainable development. Here in the United Kingdom, the Caribbean diaspora has confronted its own unique challenges. The Windrush generation dedicated themselves to advancing this great nation, despite being made to endure decades of prejudice and injustice. To this day, persons of Caribbean heritage continue to make rich contributions to every sphere of British society and economy. Although regrettably, some are still fighting to secure their rights on several fronts. However, in the face of all of this adversity, our people have consistently risen to the occasion. Now, as we confront the COVID-19 pandemic, we commend the fortitude of our brothers and sisters who are fighting sacrificially on the front lines of the National Health Service and other essential services, despite being at four times higher risk of dying from the disease. We are also proud that CARICOM, thanks to its coordinated approach and early and decisive action, has been recognized for its world-leading success in containing the virus and saving lives. In these unprecedented times, our Caribbean community must build on this tradition of resilience, fortitude and close collaboration if we are to emerge stronger. We must continue to adopt an inclusive approach that embraces our diverse strengths, the talents and resources of our public and private sectors, our civil societies and our youth, our diasporas, as well as partnerships with the with the international community. The socio-economic impacts of the global pandemic will be profound and long-lasting. Yet we must seize this rare opportunity to take radical action, prioritize innovation and effect fundamental change for the better. Together we have built a solid foundation let us continue to steadfastly chart our course towards the future we want as a united CARICOM, diverse and resilient. We now invite you to listen to messages from His Excellency Erwin LaRocque, CARICOM Secretary General, and Her Excellency Baroness Patricia Scotland, Car Commonwealth Secretary General. Testimonies of resilience from the Car Caribbean diaspora in the United Kingdom, as well as tributes in poetry and song to our com Caribbean community. Whether you are from the Caribbean or a friend of the Caribbean, please enjoy, stay safe and have a happy CARICOM day. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to address you on the occasion of your celebration of CARICOM Day 2020 in London. This year marks the 47th anniversary of the Caribbean community, and in that time, there is much of which we can be proud. We have made strides in improving the lives of our people within the four pillars of our integration movement, economic integration, human and social development, foreign policy coordination, and security cooperation. Our membership has become more diverse with Dutch-speaking Suriname and French-speaking Haiti added to our previously all-English-speaking grouping. The institutional architecture that we have built to help implement the policies and programs agreed to by our heads of government 
to enhance the well-being of the people of the community has served us well. This is evident during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our institutions, guided by the heads of government, led by the Caribbean Public Health Agency and coordinated by the CARICOM Secretariat, have all worked closely together to support the regional and national responses to COVID-19. CARICOM member states have done fairly well in containing the spread of the virus. As our countries consider reopening their borders, it is my hope that an agreement for travel corridors that would allow for safe travel and stay between the UK and our member states can be arranged. It would be remiss of me not to mention the impact of the pandemic in the United Kingdom. I extend the community's sympathy to the families of those who lost their lives, especially among our diaspora. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot end without paying tribute to the Caribbean diaspora in the United Kingdom as the anniversary of the arrival of the Windrush generation is being observed. Their experience is a fine example of the resilience of Caribbean people, enabling them to thrive in what were then alien conditions. The theme for this year's celebration, We Are CARICOM, Resilient and Diverse, is both apt and timely. I congratulate the CARICOM Corps of High Commissioners and Ambassadors for their efforts in bringing together the nationals of the community to celebrate this important day. I extend my very best wishes to you all for a happy and enjoyable CARICOM Day. I thank you. It is my very great pleasure on behalf of the Commonwealth family to offer warmest greetings and heartiest congratulations as we mark the happy occasion of CARICOM Day. Passing another milestone, 47 years of cooperation and mutual support among the governments and peoples of the Caribbean region is an achievement worthy of celebration. Yet celebration is somewhat tempered by solemnity in these somber times, communally, nationally, and internationally, it is imperative that we should plan and act together to protect the common good and the well-being of all. This demands even deeper international understanding and cooperation. And in this, the Commonwealth and CARICOM join together as allies and trusted friends. Across the Commonwealth, we stand in solidarity with our sisters and brothers of the Caribbean region. Our focus is on mobilizing awareness and assistance during this time of heightened need, on finance, on healthcare, on education, and on trade. The Commonwealth helps to amplify the voice of the Caribbean and to raise awareness of the hardship and great financial need currently being experienced. Alongside vulnerability to COVID-19 itself and to the impacts of necessary responses to the pandemic, there is increased isolation and anxiety about the sustainability of economic and physical infrastructure, concern about extreme weather, hurricanes and other natural disasters, raises awareness of the fragility of life on this planet, of our shared humanity and interdependence. This moves us with a greater sense of urgency to protect one another, our common earth and the ocean which connects us. So, as never before, we need the distinctive and admirable characteristics of the Caribbean region which are referred to in the theme for CARICOM Day 2020. Diversity to make us strong, resilient, to sustain us and bring us hope. This CARICOM Day, in pledging my continuing support 
for the region of my birth. My wish and my work is for you all to enjoy a safe, secure and sustainable future. Antigua and Barbuda is CARICOM. The Bahamas is CARICOM. Barbados is CARICOM. Dominica is CARICOM. Belize is CARICOM. Jamaica is CARICOM. Haiti is CARICOM. St. Lucia is CARICOM. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is CARICOM. Guyana is CARICOM. Trinidad and Tobago is CARICOM. Grenada is CARICOM. St. Kitts and Nevis is CARICOM. We are CARICOM, written by His Excellency Dr. Kevin Isaac, High Commissioner of St. Kitts and Nevis. Torn, tossed, tested, at the mercy of rowdy, rocky seas. Neglected, marginalized, and sometimes abandoned. Still, a determined people join hands to share journeys because we are CARICOM. Eyes teeming with life, our imagination abundant with dreams, commitment our armor. We thrive, we succeed, shielded by the unity of solidarity and diversity because we are CARICOM. These islands, enriched by medleys of life off of beauty, choreographed by nature's hands, they hold up a people like beautiful perennials, whose voices strung together in a cappella which stand the test of time. For we are Caracom. Across this radiant archipelago of dreams, sunlit skies whisper welcomes, Days dance tunes of Junkanu, nights hum melodies in Kaiso. Life hosts serenades, reminding us to remember we are Karakam. When pressed against Goliath's heel, our islands of David's bloom strength in light touches, unspoiled, resilient. We sail undaunted by struggle and buoyed by thirst to rise. For we are Karakam. So when seas and gales surge against us, we will prevail. When life's storm batter us, we will rebuild from the ground up. We sculpt courage from scratch. We refund hope with triumph. And we always deny failure a seat amongst us because we are Karakam. Hello everybody, and may I start by wishing you all a wonderful CARICOM day. I'm very proud of my Dominican heritage and what I have learned from my parents, my grandparents and my ancestors is that as Dominicans we are always open and welcoming to pe other people. This is really important today and in my work in the NHS in the UK it has helped me to have a wide view and acceptance of the differences between people. Marginalisation and challenge, which we all face in the world, is best attacked and best overcome by the welcoming and opening up of opportunities for all. What I've learned in my time in the NHS and from my heritage is that by accepting the differences and diversity of people, we are able to make sure that we, everybody has an equal chance, a better chance. And in my work around health and nursing, a better chance of health. So enjoy yourselves today and I wish you all the best of health for the rest of your lives. Thank you. Hello, my name is Amy and I work as a physiotherapist within the NHS. Before I became a physiotherapist, I was a professional athlete for many, many years competing for Great Britain and Antigua. In that time, it taught me so many different skills to show commitment, hard work, drive, 
and ultimately dedication towards my goals. This is no different to working as a physiotherapist. It means I have to show full commitment and hard work in delivering optimal care for my patients. Having a Caribbean background within the NHS is a constant reminder of our black history. It's important to recognise that the Windrush generation helped build the NHS and it played a critical part in shaping our health system as we know it today. It is important as a Caribbean clinician to follow the hard work of the Windrush generation and to continue to support the NHS organisations for race equality. My name is Dr Nola Ishmael Obi. I came to England from Barbados in 1963 to train as a nurse. Ultimately, I became the first Black Director of Nursing in the NHS. Arriving in England, I found there were many issues of marginalisation on the basis of colour. There were occasions when one's work was appropriated by others. One was often overlooked for promotion and ignored in meetings. There were difficulties in progressing on the career ladder. In my time, I had many managers who supported and encouraged me, and some who were not so supportive. My response to the often challenging environment was to work harder, study harder, stay professional, giving the best care possible, and always recognizing that a knockback or a knockdown was not a knockout. I drew on my Caribbean heritage, which provided strong family values, a focus on education and discipline and politeness. I would always pull others as I climb, mentoring and supporting. I proceeded with a positive attitude and a can-do mentality. Always a strong, proud Bajan woman at heart. Hello, my name is Alita Cousins and I'm originally from Belize, which is in the Caribbean and part of CARICOM. I work as a Transitions Quality and Audit Officer for Local Government Children's Services, where I live in the UK. I wanted to share my personal thoughts around integration and how it assisted me in my professional role. So firstly, I would like to say that I strongly believe that integration is not about losing your identity, but rather it's about your ability to understand and absorb the cultural norms and the values that underpins the society or the community that you're living in. And it's about using that capacity to become an integral part of society. So in terms of how I've transferred that to my professional role, I firmly believe that my successful integration into my community has enabled me to have a greater understanding of the challenges that children and young people with disabilities face when actively trying to become an equal and serving member, actively contributing member of their society. So for me, it's about professionals having the understanding of the importance of integration, promoting dignity, respect and equal rights and that understanding that the diversity of an individual's culture, regardless of their ethnicity, race, creed or disability, will actually enrich the community that you live in. Thank you. I arrived here in the latter part of 1973 to join the NHS in pursuing a career in nursing. As most people arriving around that time, my goal was to return home after five years. As my fifth year approached, I began to make the necessary preparation for my return. But as luck has it, I met my husband-to-be. In spite of meeting him, I proceeded with my plans and returned to Grenada. We continued the line of communication between us and the pressure was on. I eventually capitulated and returned to the United Kingdom in 1979. I rejoined the NHS and continued with, in my, with my career, climbing the professional ladder. Four years later, I got married and eventually gave birth to two beautiful daughters, who in fact have now given me three gorgeous grandchildren. I can categorically say that my experience in returning to the UK in 1979 has been the catalyst for shaping my life into what it is today. 
As someone with a Caribbean background, my contribution to the NHS has been in the capacity of a senior nurse. Being in that position gave me the opportunity to redress the imbalance of discrimination in the clinical management of ethnic minority patients. I did this through empathising and sharing an understanding of their backgrounds and the reasons for their choices. I also acted as an advocate for patients who could not be understood because of their heavy accents and poor grammar who were often deemed stupid or illiterate. Having climbed the professional ladder, I became a visible role model for other ethnic minority nurses to aspire and achieve. I'm the president of the Haitian Chamber of Commerce in Great Britain and the owner of the first Haitian restaurant and cocktail bar in London, the Grill Shack and Tiki Bar. As a Caribbean diaspora, some of the initiatives that I took to bring social changes. First, it was to set up a charity back in 2008 to promote uh, the culture, Haitian culture here through social events. But I quickly realized that some of the social and economic changes that we need is not going to be resolved through the health system, through charities. That's why I set up the Chamber of Commerce in 2015 to promote trade, investment, and cultural exchange between Haiti and Great Britain. And then in 2019, I opened Great Shark and Tiki Bar. This is not just to promote Haiti, it's to promote the whole the Caribbean. People come here because of the decor, it's very authentic, the vibe, the atmosphere. I think <clears throat> this is a good representation of the, of the Caribbean, what to expect if you were to go to the Caribbean here. As for my um, education experience here, firstly I studied in Haiti, in France, and then I came to London, to the UK, to further my education. So I went and studied for an MBA at the Manchester Business School. It was a fantastic experience, great opportunity to network, to meet and study with some other people from different backgrounds. It kind of shaped up my mindset um, to better promote the Caribbean region as a great place for doing business. I mean, since this pandemic, I've been, I participated and joined to so, so many conferences, um, people from different sectors exchanging, how can we all from the Caribbean, from different places in the Caribbean, to see how it can improve our businesses. And most importantly, is to how can we make an impact in the local economy back home. I have worked over 35 years in the National Health Service as a nurse, midwife, general manager, and executive director of nursing. To reach this current position has not been without its many, many challenges, such as prejudices, racism, being treated differently, and lack of opportunities at times. However, as a Caribbean woman from Jamaica, I drew on the strength of my character, which was shaped by strong family values, good education system in Jamaica, community support, and, in, and that infectious and vibrant culture of Jamaica that gives you the feeling you can achieve anything. My first motivator was my mother, who instilled the discipline of seeing things through with the saying never give up if you fail try and try again armed with this self-belief confidence determination tenacity courage and ambition I was able to successfully navigate through a system that did not fully appreciate the value of embracing diversity. That system existed then and still exists today. To this end, I endeavor to continue influencing the growth and development of the Black and Minority Ethnic Nurses all healthcare professionals in UK. The survival mentality of my heritage was crucial in my journey. I've worked in the National Health Service 
as a community midwife for over 30 years before I retired. During my career, I have encountered pockets of racism. For example, when a patient's husband refused to allow me to deliver his baby because he did not want my black hand to touch his baby. I asked for the reason and he, the reason he gave me was that they have come all the way over from South Africa to this country to get away from my sort of people. I was shocked. So I went and reported this to my manager who came into the delivery room with me and instead of her telling him what is expected of him, she took over the delivery and sent me out of the room. That saddened me. Racism was institutional. I applied for study leave to do my master's degree. Whilst they were granting it to others, other midwives, white midwives, they rejected mine. So I had to do my master's degree two years without a day off. When they would have advertised for jobs and when I applied, they would, I would be unsuccessful. The sad thing about it, the people they appointed were always less qualified midwives than myself. And these people usually would have to come to me for help and advice. With all the, the barriers placed in my way to prevent me from breaking through the glass ceiling, I would still encourage black women to go into midwifery. It's a worthwhile and rewarding career. But they have to go in armed in the knowledge that they have to be prepared to face racism, discrimination and inequality. But wherever they find it, they must stand up against it. The time has passed for silence. Silence is not an option now. We have to talk about it. We have to um, highlight it. We even have to write about it. I've, I've done that. So my message would be, you can do it regardless of the color of your skin. Education is the important role here. Diversity for me means being fortunate to be part of a community of peoples of different color, race and religion. I have contributed to the community in many ways. Leadership and senior management in the NHS for over 40 years, chair of school boards in my community and co-founder of one of the largest mental health charity in the UK with a particular focus on people of the CARICOM diaspora community. An experience I like to share that shaped my life at home living in the UK is that of becoming a magistrate. As a magistrate, I sit in a magistrate court and a crunk court in my community. I specialize in youth justice and that has enabled me to contribute to the legal process that assists the young people of the CARICOM diaspora community. I am from the Bahamas and I came to the UK to study medicine. I've established a practice in St. John's Wood, a private practice. I also do NHS cardiology as a spread with a special interest. I feel that um, it is my responsibility to try to encourage and support anyone, particularly females wanting to do medicine, particularly those um, from the Caribbean that especially are wanting to go back to contribute to um, the welfare of individuals in the Caribbean. I continue to mentor um, young girls, especially um, that are from deprived um, backgrounds. Um, I think as a black female, um, achieving what I have achieved. I hope that this encourages young people, particularly from ethnic, other ethnic backgrounds, to understand that um, with hard work, perseverance, determination, and with focus, all things are possible. I was born in San Fernando, Trinidad, and I came to live in the United Kingdom in September 1965. I am therefore now 55 years living in this country, 
During that 55 years, I have been involved in various projects and, and uh, organizations to help to deal with the issues that we face as a Caribbean community. One of the most seminal of these institutions is the Black Liberation Front. This was a grouping of black political activists set up to deal with issues and initiatives to help the community. We set up Ujima Housing Association, which is a housing association for homeless young people, Head Start Books and Crafts, which was a library and a bookshop, Grassroots Storefront, which is an outlet for the community, and Grassroots, a monthly newsletter that I edited. Being a secondary school teacher in London, a vice principal of a college of further education and the director of a community education center, I was acutely aware of how the British education system was discriminated against black children. And therefore I set about projects to address these issues, or at least parts of these issues. The first was an opportunity to make people who are as pan tuners and pan tutors to get them qualified in the art of teaching so that they can teach in schools, primary and secondary. The second was with Andrew Ramroop, the creation of the Savaro Academy to train young people in the skills of master tailors. These two opportunities, these two projects can be of value to the CARICOM, CARICOM countries as we can share experiences, develop partnerships for the benefit of both communities here in London and here in the Caribbean. I came to this, the United Kingdom in 1963 from St. Lucia to pursue a career in the nursing profession. I arrived in the United Kingdom in 1963 and worked with various companies to include London Transport as a bus driver, One State Hospital as a theatre attendant, and the post office as a garage assistant. What motivated us really uh, to raise the flag was that um, we felt that a lot of our St. Lucian people were not being engaged. They were very much apart from each other and we, we sat down and decided well the best thing to do is to talk to Newham Council. At that time Justin did work for the council and asked them if they would allow us to do it. They said it has to go through committee. It went through committee and the council did approve for us to raise the flag. Since then um, the, the St. Lucian community have been very much together. Um, we have people coming from Paddington all over to attend on the 13th of every year, 13th December every year. Credit Union was the best thing we ever introduced in the local community to meet the needs of the people around us. The Credit Union, very clear, not for profit, not for charity, people helping people. There was other groups who were very keen to support what we're doing. And I would say what motivates me is the fact that if somebody cannot afford to look after himself we or herself, who are in a position where we know we could encourage them to have a loan from the credit union, and then they will pay as the rule said. And we find this was working very well because the people who belong to the local community become part of that very same credit union. And that's going on since 1976. And we are now in 2020, and it's still going as strong as it has been over the years. We have a budget of 285,000, and people are just borrowing to buy books for the children, school uniform for the children. Some people uh, pay, use it for their mortgages, to buy property, to buy cars. So we feel it was a good thing that we'd really embark on. From many distant lands, our forefathers came. Some seeking adventure, some bound in chains. Through battles waged and fought, and pain by test of their courage our freedom was gained in homage 
to those gone before us, us, the heroes of lands in the sun. We vow to join hands and to focus on building one Caribbean. Raise your voices high, sing of your Caribbean pride.